I've had a question from Mark Tyler asking about the amount of run out I'm getting with the lathe with the three jaw chuck installed. I did actually check the run out when I first got the lathe. I didn't make a video of it and I don't believe I posted my results anywhere. The lathe has now got quite a few hours on it so it would have settled in uh, and given that the question has been asked it's, it's worth rerunning those tests and I'll make this video to share those results. What I'll do is I'll, I will actually, before we put the chuck in place, we'll see what run out we're getting on the spindle, both in terms of the inside edge, sorry, the, the spindle bore, which is an MT4 uh, taper, and also the index, which is this face here, which is the indexing face for the chucks. A word or two of caution before we dive into taking any measurements. I should note that my measurement equipment, for example this dial gauge, is bottom end stuff. So we're not talking expensive Mititoyo type uh, instruments. This is in fact a draper expert, so it's certainly not what I would consider to be a top end piece of kit. It's also quite old, I must have had it 15-20 years. Um, and of course it is not calibrated. There is no calibration certificate to go against this. So let's not get too focused on the absolute numbers themselves. Let's more look at the variation. And, and of course you can see that the plunger is not at um, 90 degrees to the surface it's measuring, so there's also going to be a degree of cosine error there as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run the lathe at its slowest speed and we'll see how much variation we're getting on the dial gauge. Let's just bring that into zero. I do expect the zero to move slightly as I start the machine as the plunger settles into position. I'm round about three millimeters in from the edge of the MT4 taper. So it's varying round about plus or minus 0.05 millimeters on that inside surface of the spindle. So we'll now we we'll move up to the face which is used to index against the chucks. plunger is now against that uh, indexing edge on the back plate. I'm not going to adjust the zero, it's currently set at 0.04 millimetres. And as we can see the variation we're getting here is very similar to what we saw on the inside edge of that spindle, plus or minus 0.05 of a millimetre. I don't think there's any point in running the gauge or running a test against the outside edge of the back plate. It's the spindle bore and this indexing face that we're interested in. The chuck that came supplied with the lathe is this device. It's labelled Fuera, um, 125mm with a maximum speed of 3000 rpm and a serial number on it. When it gets installed into the lathe there is this indexing face which fits against the indexing face of the back plate uh, and there is a, an alignment mark on the back plate stamped to zero here which aligns to or should align to the zero that's stamped both on the chuck itself and the chuck back plate. Fitting chucks on this machine is a pain. I guess it's what comes with the style of lathe. You can see there's three studs. The studs locate through the three holes on the back plate and then nuts with washers need to be installed on the back which is very tight uh, and becomes a real pain. Often when undoing them the studs will come undone. You can see that one's loose. I need to nip that before I put it back in. Um, and of course the nuts and washers always get dropped even with a, a piece of wood down below. But I'll stick it on now and then we'll run some further tests. Test 
to test with the chuck, I'll actually use this test bar or test mandrial if you read the uh, text on the front there. Uh, this is a test bar with an MT3 taper at one end. Uh, was fine for my boxwood because I had an MT3 taper in the headstock spindle. So I could put it in there and, and very quickly run some tests. So this lathe has an MT4 taper as I called out earlier. I'm deliberately not going to put this into a sleeve and then into the spindle itself. What we're going to do is we're going to just use the parallel section of the test bar by throwing it into the chuck uh, and then looking at the run out. And we'll look at the run out very close to the chuck jaws and then we'll look as far as we can go down on the parallel part of the test bar. As with all my previous warnings, you know, I, I, I do not have any calibration certificate to go with this. I do not know how concentric it is. Um, I'm fairly confident it's the same diameter all the way along. In fact, I'll, I'll do some checks offline now and confirm that back. Uh, but it's, it's what we're going to use for tests. I'm going to install the parallel section so that it uh, goes as far into the chuck as the depth of the jaws. And that should help hold it nicely concentric or as good as con concentric this chuck is going to allow us to do. Right, okay. So the dial gauge is on zero. Let's just run the lathe up. I would say, as expected, we've got a fair bit of variation there. With the lathe running at this speed, it's running between 0 0.02 and 0 0.08. So given us a run out of, total run out of 0 0.06. But bear in mind all my cautious words at the beginning uh, about the accuracy of what we're doing here. Just out of interest, I'm gonna rotate that by hand. So that's, the lowest reading was there. So it's going from 0 0.02 to 0 0.08. Yeah, so plus or minus 0 0.03 or a total variation of 0 0.06. And if we move along, And we'll run the lathe at slow speed. When I say slowest speed, this is slowest speed without engaging back gear. So it will actually run a fair bit slower, but this is good enough for what I'm trying to achieve today. So we're seeing a bigger variation as we've come away from the chuck, which does indicate also that the part has not been held uh, dead square with the, the axis of the lathe. So by my eye, that's varying from around about 0 0.01 to 0 0.1. So not far short of a run out of 0 0.1 millimeters or plus or minus 0 0.05 millimeters. And again, we'll just do that slowly by hand. So the peak is 0.1, drops down to 0 0.01, just over. Okay, there we go. Mark, I hope that answers your questions.